button, the start streaming button. Okay, it's streaming. Excellent connection. Uh, okay, now it's streaming to YouTube. All right, so. Okay, I think we're streaming. Yep, yeah, it's live. Okay, cool. I'll move this window over here. I think there's some lag when we go to YouTube because I can still see that window's up there. Yeah, there's like a five or six second lag going to YouTube. But uh, our both our faces are up, and you can see my desktop, so we should be good to go. Yep. Cool. All right. Cool. All right, so do you want me to go on and tell people to come to the um, – check this out, or is this still a test one? No, you can if you want. All right. I, All right. But I don't know how to give you the link. It's okay. People can't figure it out. I can't help them. <laughs> uh, I guess go to YouTube and go to my channel. And, oh, I can, we can watch. I can see the live. How do you share that? Oh, We're can, live. What's up, party people? What's up, Mike? I'm on here. Look on my face. I'm on here. Oh, maybe front my face just looks weird. Anyways, I'm on here to let you guys know that uh, I am live on YouTube with Pete Squared 23, <laughs> and we're going over some cool stuff and how to use Fusion and how to. Um, make things uh, that um, you could use to process and make parts on your CNC. So uh, if any of you guys want to check that out, this is me just telling you what's going on. Um, Pete Square 23 is who you want to check out. You know, write it down. Square 23. So go to YouTube. Look for Pete Square 23, and we're going live talking about Fusion 360 and how to manufacture things, the basics. Um, I know how to use Fusion a little bit, so Pete's going to show us what's going on. So <laughs> tell your friends. Cool. Pete, he says hi. Awesome. All right. Well, we should... Do you want to wait for people or just want to jump on and start chatting? No. Okay. So All right. I'll see you guys there. Uh, there's a couple people. <laughs> so one key thing that I've learned on with Fusion 360 is you should have calipers. Because <laughs> okay. any, anything that you're trying to match in the real world, you kind of want to measure first. So okay. here's, here's a piece of three-quarters inch Baltic birch plywood. This is not three quarters of an inch. <laughs> this is no. in fact 0.7 of an inch. So before I do anything in Fusion 360, I grab the materials that we're gonna mill or use, whether it's half inch plywood or three quarters inch plywood, and I grab it and I put the calipers on it. And sometimes this stuff is 0.7, sometimes it's 0.71, sometimes it's 0.65. So Especially when you're setting up your tool paths, that is very important. So, like when I when I've done mine, right? Sometimes I've gotten um, 0.74 in one side, and then the other side is 0.72. Yeah, I would. You could just average it, but then you have to make sure that your offsets for going through all the way, which I'll, I'll, we'll get to in a minute. You're going to go through the bottom of the board enough into your spoil board to actually cut it free. And I've done a terrible job with surfacing my spoil board. So at times, like if I don't put enough uh, like bottom clearance or bottom offset, the front part of the piece will be all the way through the, the plywood, but the back piece won't. And then suddenly I'll have to rerun the program or trim it out or, or just get it with an X-Acto knife or stuff like that. But, yeah, I get that. All right, so let's jump into Fusion. So the first thing you should know is that Fusion will not do 
what you want it to do. <laughs> you have to do what Fusion wants. So yeah. as a 3D modeler, do it, you know, working with stuff like 3D Studio Max and Maya, there's a lot of different ways of doing workflows. Um, and Fusion really, really wants you to work the way it wants to work. So there is some workarounds, but unless you do things in a certain in a certain order, your results you're just not going to get the results that you're looking for. So yeah. And so here's the the basic 3D space, and I'm I, I'm assuming you're familiar with getting around in here, rotating your camera. Uh, mm -hmm. You hold down the middle mouse button to pan. You hold down shift and the middle mouse button to rotate and then the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. There's probably some more functionality there. But that's commonly what I use to get around. So, yeah, I'm at the point now I can draw squares and shapes and I can extrude them. Um, and I know about the um, sketches and naming your sketches. Mm -hmm. um, and I know about the timeline. So that, that's how far I've made it. Okay, uh, so let, let's catch up to where you're at then. So looking at the 3D view from the kind of a top angle, here is the top right here. On the, on the view cube in the upper right hand corner, you can see top. You can click that or you can just make sure that you see top. First thing you wanna do is grab an upper left hand corner, it says create sketch, click on that and then when I was first learning, this is where I got really confused. I'm like, well, I want to draw a sketch. What's going on? Like, what, wh why is it flipping around and doing this stuff? What it wants you to do is to pick a, an axis or a plane to where you want to start drawing your sketch. It gives you the flexibility where you can draw it on the X, Y, or Z planes. Um, but to keep things simple, just start out on the Z on the Z plane. So looking top, top down, click on this yellow square, which means you're going to be doing a top down drawing. Does that make sense? Okay. Yep. So now after you click on that square, you are in draw mode and it looks exactly the same as when you were in design mode. I mean, technically you're still in design mode, but you're, you're drawing a sketch now. <laughs> so, and, and that is also kind of, was confusing. So the, there's a big difference between when you're drawing sketches and when you're building 3D geometry or bodies. So mm -hmm. a good way to know that is if you look up at the top, kind of in the middle of your screen, there's a finish sketch button. If you see that, that means you're in sketch mode. You're not in like moving body mode. You're all do, I need to think, do I need to think about each sketch um, individually? Um, as like each part is its own sketch or is the entire piece the sketch? That's up to how you want to work. So let's say you're building a, a shelf or uh, like a cabinet with a bunch of shelves. Well, you let's say I'm building a box. Cause like that, like, so is each side of the box a sketch and the top of the bottom is a sketch or is the box one sketch? It, again, it's up to you. It, if you can put the bottom, the sides all in one sketch and you're going to extrude from that sketch and it'll create different bodies for you, or you can okay. separate it out into different sketches. It's, okay. it's how, it's how you want to work. I recommend oh. that if you're doing something simple with maybe like less than 10 parts, it's all part of the same type of, all part of the same sketch. Okay. So because we're in sketch mode, looking up here. We got we have different choices in your um, tool palette. So these look uh, upper left hand corner. They look more like sketch options. So to keep things simple, let's build a rectangle. So we're going to grab okay. that, and now it gives you a little pointer. And I'm going to click right on the grid. You click once to start, and you click again to end, and that will create a box. Or and with, I, without I measurement. I think the dimensions there, right? Right. So you don't have to include dimensions, or you could add the dimensions now in, with, before you stop your sketch. So let's okay. make, if you start t typing in numbers, let's make that four inches, and then you hit tab, and then make that two inches, and hit return. And now you have a, a, basically a square sketch with dimensions. So let's say you you didn't do it that way. Let's say you just clicked and dragged and stopped. 
So now you have a box without dimensions. So the difference between this type of box and this type of box is if I grab a corner here and move it around, it'll fr let me freely change the dimensions of that box. While this one won't. This one won't because it has these dimensions in here. So again, it's, it's, neither one is better or worse. It's up to how you want to work. So here in this box, let's say we want to add dimensions because we finally got to the point where we want to set it up to the dimensions we want. Uh, sketch dimensions, this option up here in the upper left-hand corner. You can grab this, grab a side, sorry, and say, okay, let's make this four inches. Now, because it has a dimension here, that part of the box is now oh, locked okay. to that dimension. Where we didn't add a dimension <laughs> in here, so you can still scale this. So let's let's go here and say, okay, that's two. Now, you could also, instead of grabbing a side, you could also grab points and say... And I got that error message because there was already dimension there. So if you want so, to change, change the dimension. So if I want to change the dimension, is it? Okay, you just click that. Yeah, one. double okay, click on it and just say five. Or you can select it, delete it by hitting delete on the keyboard, and then add a new one. So. Now, okay. whether, you, whether you've grabbed a side or the two points on a side, you're basically making the exact same dimension, and there's, there's no difference there. So let's go back to our, this is our dimension box. And let's say, let's say we want to uh, make this into a shelf that we're going to store glue on. So let's assume that one of the, the tight bond glue bottles is, you know, four inches by four inches. It's probably smaller than that, but, but let's do that. Yeah, it's, it's probably like, yeah, four inches is fine. That's where your calipers would come in. You, you would grab that bottle and you would start measuring that. And I... I don't have a, a circular bottle, otherwise I would do that, but let's start with that. So let's say this is gonna be the bottom of our box and we wanna make a side. So let's draw this out. And I forgot to add dimensions, so let's add those. And we want it to be the same size, which I think is eight inches. And let's say we wanna make the tall tall side of the, or the, the height of the side we want to make three inches so now that's the side of our box and let's make the other side so we know that this side is four inches and the height is three inches so for to just go through this process we'll, we'll start extruding these and we'll see where we kind of start to have issues with how we size this out. Now, also keep in mind that you you don't have to sketch every single side because obviously the two side, two long sides are exactly the same. The two right. short sides are exactly the same. So um, save yourself a lot of time and just just sketch one side and then we're gonna duplicate. It's kind of like instant oh, okay. and do that. So now when you're done with your sketches, we're gonna say, Finish sketch. You can see the sketch tool palette in the right hand corner. We'll say finish sketch. And now we're out of sketch mode. So you can still select your sketch and you can still grab corners and move it around, but technically you're not in sketch mode. Uh, so some of the features of being in sketch mode, like creating new sketches or modifying dimensions and stuff like that, you don't have access to now. In, in, in because you're more in the 3D design mode now, which, which can get confusing. You kind of have to, to practice going back and forth between the two to get your mindset in a way where it's not causing you confusion. I, when I first jumped into Fusion, I started just grabbing 3D objects and placing them down in the world, not knowing that you can't add dimensions to those <laughs> or you can't um, work with them in, 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 in an effective way you kind of need to start with a sketch first. So in our hierarchy over here, there's a folder called sketches, and then this is where our sketch is. So if I select it, it's gonna select all the sketches here. I'm mm -hmm. gonna, just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna right click and say show dimensions. 
Now we actually get to see dimensions on our sketch in design mode. Am I, is it making sense, like, the difference between design mode and sketch mode? Kind of. I mean, um, yes. Yes, it does. Yeah, because you're, you're basically in sketch mode, you're creating it. In design mode, you're kind of, like, laying it out. Yeah. It's, it's weird. <laughs> I don't know why you would have that would be separate modes, but... Well, Fusion really wants you to work with extruding things to the thickness of your material. So that's what we're going to do right now. We know that our plywood is probably like 0.7 or around 0.7 inches. So I'm going to grab this button in the upper left-hand corner called Extrude. And I'm going to grab, I'm going to click on one of the, the drawings that we just, one of the sketches that we just made. And I'm going to say 0.7. And I'll hit return. Now, it automatically hides your sketch when you when you extrude something, which also is confusing. So if you want to turn that back on, you can go back into your sketch folder in the, in the left-hand corner and click the eyeball and turn it back on. Oh, OK. Uh, I'm not sure why that's a feature. <laughs> it just works that way. I, I'm probably missing something, and, and, and they do that for a reason, but I'm not sure what the reason is. So now we have our body. And we have our sketches. So let's extrude 0.7, which is the thickness of our plywood. And we'll extrude on this one 0.7, which is the thickness of our plywood. We have the bottom, we have the sides. And now these are bodies that we can move around and do stuff with. But we haven't created any dados or any way for those things to fit together. So um, what I'm going to do now is right click in, in an empty space where there is nothing there and I'm going to select the move copy option. So if I click on this body, I can shift this away from my sketch just to make things a little bit easier to read. Hit return. I'm going to move this side over here. And then there's, I'm not sure if you can see that on your screen, but there's all different kinds of gizmos here for mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're moving things around. And I'm going to grab the gizmo that looks kind of like a circle with an arc. That's mm -hmm. going to allow me to rotate things. So I'm going to click and drag that, and it'll rotate that around. Because we, we're kind of orienting our sides to match our bottom. But I'm not done there. In the move copy folder or uh, panel to the right-hand side, there's other options. So right now we're in the free move mode. And that works well. You can grab an arrow, you can move this around, you can move that around. It's great. Uh, what we're going to do now is we want to align that to the, our bottom. So there's another move, another um, option in that panel, the move copy uh, panel called point to point. So I'm going to click on that. And it, what it's saying now is it wants the origin point. So I'm going to click on this corner. I'm going to say, I'm basically saying, I like that corner. And I'm going to align that corner to the corner on my bottom. So I'm going to click on that corner. And now this jumps to target point. So it, in a lot of these panels, whatever is highlighted in blue is kind of what is active at that time. So the target point is now what's active. So I'm going to click on this point on the other body, and it aligns. Did that make sense, or did I go too fast? Yeah. And now that we like that, we're going to hit OK, and that's going to be done. So now we have one side aligned to our bottom. And, it, and we're doing this not because we're going to try to mill these pieces on the CNC. We're doing this to try to set them up and see how they fit together so that we know we created them properly. So I'm going to right click out in the middle of nowhere. and. And Luke, I'm sorry if I'm going, if I'm rambling or going too fast. Just jump in if you have questions. Actually, you, you could go a little faster if you needed to. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm quick picking up this. Okay, cool. So right now I'm going to go back into move and copy. I'm going to grab our side. I'm going to stay in point to point, but I'm going to click on the checkbox that says create a copy. For origin point, I'm going to click here. For target point, I'm going to click here and just make a copy oh. of that side. That was easy. Um, now, 
the bodies that we're creating have a linkage to our original sketch. So if we go back to this original sketch and grab a dimension and we change it, see how those updated? They got bigger. Wait, what did you do? I went back to the, oh, wow, yeah. to the sketch dimension. Now, they both got bigger. Yeah, because I created a copy of this, of the psi. Any copies that you make of those bodies, it's basically going to treat it as another version of that exact same piece, the, the exact same body. So let's say we had a thousand of these throughout our scene and we went back to the original sketch and we changed the dimension, all of them would update, which is good wow. and bad. <laughs> so let's say you get a really, really complex thing going on and you weren't really sure where some of them were duplicated or copied and, and where other bodies weren't, this could cause a lot of issues. So be very wary about where you're copying things from and, and understand that because this is a parametrically generated models and sketches and everything like that, anything that you do way back at the beginning is going to affect anything way down the road. And, and some of that is reflected in the timeline at the bottom. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so let's put this back to eight because that's our size. And we're going to grab this other side over here and we're going to move it over. And using these controls, we're going to rotate it in place. And now we start to see that we didn't a lot, a lot for, or, you know, we didn't make the sketches so that this thing will fit or this side will fit properly. See how it's not long enough to actually cover that entire side. And we didn't create any dados or anything to where we can, we can make it more like this. So this is the kind of thing that you have to figure out within your design is how these pieces fit together. Now we could, we could do that by adding dados or we could do that by just making this larger and having it fill up this entire side. It's really up to how you want to generate things. So I'm going to, I'm going to line this from the bottom and hit okay. And now I'm going to go over to this part of the sketch. Now we, we originally made this three inches tall. Let's make it four. Well, it's not four. It's, it's maybe 375. So now we start dealing with kind of guesswork. And this is not the most ideal way of working. We're, we're basically say, trying to figure out, okay, I, you know, this piece it has this much depth. It's 0.7. This piece was three inches tall. What we can do is we can start setting up ways of adding dimensions in here that we can understand how things kind of fit together. Sorry, I, I know I'm not making any sense. You want to reduce the amount of manual steps like that. You want to make this more automated, parametric. Yeah, can't you just like click a side and say align to you, you could. the other one? So what we're going to do here is like that's that's the height of our side. So we're going to click back over on this dimension because we want it to match this side. So now you get a D7. That relates to this measurement. It's, it's arbitrarily called D7. And we know that we extruded this by 0.7. So we can start putting math into these dimensions. We can say plus 0.7. And that's going to give us a function which, oh, which allows us to... spreadsheet. Now, if you change the height of the one, it's going to go the other plus 0.7, which is the thickness of the bottom. Right, so let's let's go back over to D7 over here and say, oh, we don't want this four inches. We want it to be we, three inches. We want it to be four inches. So now this side changed and all of these sides changed. And that, that's cool. You start to discover the real power of fusion because you can add all of these things. See how they're all moving together? Yeah. So here's another thing. Go under modify and scroll down to where it says change parameters. 
So now this opens up a window that kind of looks like an Excel document where you can start adding in your own parameters. So let's add in a parameter. Let's, let's call this plywood thickness. And we know our plywood is 0.7. And now we want to do um, size or side height. And let's say we want that to be three. So now we have two parameters. These are global parameters that we can use anywhere we want. So instead of going in here and saying, we want this to be, you know, three inches tall, we're going to go in here and start typing plywood. So oh, this side uh, height? Uh, yeah, sorry. Side yeah. Height. I'm in my office. I'm up here to talk about it. So now this turns into a function for site height. And now wow. we're going to go over here and we're going to say site height plus plywood thickness. Oh, wow. And now when we go back and we change the parameter and we say, oh, you know, three inches is not enough. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Look, sorry. What did you say? Are you switching back to that old? Are you going to the DC levels? Yeah. Don't pick new game, pick load game, and pick the biggest number. Just give you two or three options. Pick the one that's the biggest, okay? <laughs> so you gotta hit, you gotta go back to the PlayStation, hit the PlayStation button, then hit the option button, PlayStation, option, close. Or quit, close or quit. PlayStation option, close or quit. You're teaching me this, I'm teaching them video games. I know. <laughs> well, we'll do that for the next live stream. We'll all learn how to play video games better. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now you're going to change the height and everything's going to change. Right. So if you had a super complicated design or, or you were designing something for a customer and they wanted these shelves to be wider. You don't have to go in and, and click on all of these sketches and do everything because it's already set up for you. You can basically say, oh, well, I'm going to make a version of this that's five inches tall. Great. Change my parameter five inches and I'm milling that. I, now I want to make it three inches tall. And you can get really, really complex with these things. Um, so much so that uh, you could put in values in there and, you, and your whole thing just explodes because it's just... It, everything's kind of tied together in, in doing weird stuff. But um, I definitely urge you to jump into the the parameters and figure that out because it'll save you so much time. And it's, I don't know, it's a lot of fun. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it is cool. So now are you going to copy the other side and, and move it? Yeah. Let's go in here. Oh, sorry. Move. And we're going to grab that side, copy it. I'm gonna click this origin point and I'm gonna line it to that origin point and I'm gonna make sure that create copy is turned on. You, you put it on the inside, not the outside. Yeah, I messed up. Let's, let's fix that. So this origin, origin point to that origin point. Cool. Now, because we made a copy of that, it's it's instant. first. I did. And then you got to hit the option button. I did. So you're on the home screen, you're outside of the game, right? No. Put the PlayStation until you get to the home screen. The home screen is the one where you see all the different games and all the different stuff you can do. Okay. And then you move you move the thing over the game, and you don't hit X to open it. You hit the start. You hit the the pause button, and then when you see the pause button, you'll see an option there. This is a closure quick. There you go. Sorry about that. Oh, no worries. But I think I'm, I think I got it. I think I can handle this. This this seems you very doable. Uh, do you want to add dados to this and fit it together, or do you want to do some more advanced type stuff? So what I would like to do is. I would, there's, so 
I would like it you to change the shape of the sides into arcs, right? Something a little more stylish. Okay. And then, and then I want to cut it out as rings on my CNC and stack them up. Cut it out as rings. Well, let's let's jump in and I'll, we'll add some curves and then we'll kind of figure out where you what you're asking for. I'm not I'm not positive I understand. Let's try. It. Let's do it though. Okay, so going back into my sketch folder on the left hand side, here's the sketch that we're working with. I'm gonna we're gonna jump in there, right click on it and say edit sketch. So now our like bodies disappear. Okay. Because the bodies were created after the sketches were. So because we're altering the sketch in the timeline earlier on, now we don't get to see our bodies. So here, wait, hey, because you're in sketch mode. Yeah, because I right clicked and, and went back into sketch mode. But if you look at our timeline, everything in here is grayed out after the sketch, because we okay. created, we did all of this after the sketch. Got it. Okay. So let's. Here's our top edge, or hopefully that'll. Oh, so, no, that's so, our so here's what here, I quickly sketched out. So, so, so like. Instead of it being a square box, I thought, what if it was an oval-shaped box, right? And then those, those sides here, these would be the layers of plywood, okay. right? I see what you're saying. You know? So let's, let's start a new sketch. So up, upper left-hand corner, we're going to click on the Create Sketch button. We're going to... Because I think that would be good to know, because, like, if, I, if, I, if you show me how to do that, right, so I think I have an idea kind of how to do it. And then you can show me how you would place it on the CNC and tell the CNC what to do. Sure, that, that makes sense. So create sketch, we're gonna click on our yellow box on our Z, or I think this is the X, Y axis, is that right? No, Y, X axis, yeah. Okay, so now we're creating a new sketch, excuse me, and you wanna make this oval shaped, not circular shaped, right? Correct, well, well flat, like, like, like this shape. this okay so there's two ways to do that one is that we make an oval that we extrude and the other way is we just um we chamfer the corners of that existing box oh so mm -hmm. let's let's chamfer the corners first so yeah i think the chamfer in the corners would make the most sense so let's draw a new box and let's make this 12 by 6. And to make things simple, we're going to hide our older sketch, our first sketch, and just work with the, the new sketch. And I'll even hide the old bodies. So here's our new sketch. We have some dimensions to it. Keep in mind, um, like if you look at the upper left-hand corner of your sketch palette, there's another button called Create, and there's a lot more options in here. So if you wanted to create circles there's tons of different ways of creating circles arcs there's tons of ways of creating arcs you're not limited to the things that are here uh, mm -hmm. so whenever you you get the chance to go through some of these some of the, some of them are really cool like slot slots i love that tool like you can create these really cool organic shaped slots and they're really neat so mm -hmm. uh and then next to create there's a thing called modify and there's cool button here called fill it I, I call it chamfer chamfer um from because that's what it's called in like maya and 3d studio max but in here they call it fill it so click that and start clicking corners click all the corners that you want to apply a fillet and then they'll also give you a radius fillet radius oh my god so you can set that to two you have to be careful because when if these things get too big, your sketch will start to shift around. See how that's... So sometimes it's good to like make sure that you lock down your sketch before you start to do this. Right now we're only working with one thing, so it's, it doesn't really matter that much. So let's make these... That's weird that this one's getting all bunched out right there. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Let's, let's go back a little bit. 
So we're going to fill it this. And so you couldn't like click that arrow and drag that instead of? Yes, you can. And the reason why it's freaking out is because the edges of these circles are going past each other and it just doesn't know what to do. It doesn't have, have no hand. <laughs> Uh, and that's where you can get in trouble with attributes or uh, with parameters. So if you if you do some out of range parameters, you'll you'll start to get this kind of effect. Um, all right, so let's go back to fillet and let's grab that corner and that corner, this corner and this corner, and let's leave it at 1.5 .5 inches radius, and we got a warning. Oh, it went away. I'm worried that we're not doing this correct. I might be messing up somehow. Okay. Well, let's let's leave it there, there for now. I'm not positive I'm doing this the right way. Uh, and then next to or near fillet is offset. So let's grab offset and let's gr grab this sketch. And now we can offset this inward. And be careful. Like, don't go beyond... Like, see how those points are starting to overlap on the corners? It, you might get some weird results if you drive this too too far. Let's do a half inch. Okay, so half inch. Now we have our sketch. And we're going to finish our sketch. We're going to go outside, and we're going we're gonna to extrude this by the plywood thickness. So let's grab this inner piece and this outer piece because we're gonna make the bottom first. Or actually, let's add a dado to this. I, th I think that, that might be cool. So let's grab the inner piece first, and we know that that's going to be the plywood thickness, which we already set a parameter for. Hit return. Uh, it hides our sketch. We wanna unhide our sketch and bring it back again because we're not done with it yet. Now we're gonna select this outside ring, and, but we're not going to extrude it up all the way because we're gonna, we wanna add a, a dado around the edge. So we're gonna do plywood thickness, and we're gonna do divided by two. So we're gonna make it half, half as tall. Oh wow, I like to make, that's cool. And then double check over in your extrude panel that it's set to join. Some, sometimes over here under operation, you have different options. Sometimes it's join, cut, intersect, and these are Boolean functions. If you wanted to, you could create a brand new body, but by default, it tries to figure it out for you and it thinks that we want to join these two together. So let's just leave that alone on join right now and hit OK. And now this turns into a body that we can, we can mill, we can mess around with, we can do whatever, whatever we want to with. So let's move this out of the way real fast. Now we can use the same sketch to make more pieces. We don't have to redraw this to make other bodies. So let's make uh, the hollow side pieces. We're, we're gonna grab the same area of the same sketch and we're gonna say this is also plywood thickness. And then we get a brand new body that looks like that. And that's that's what you wanted for the sides, right? Yep. yep. Cool, so let's... Then let's say we're gonna go three, Three inches, inches tall, tall or four, four inches tall, tall so you're going to need, let's do three inches, so you would need four layers on top of it. So we're gonna, no, let's go five layers. Okay. So when you move something, it moves in uh, increments of, of half an inch and an inch. So let's move this up, and then we're going to grab our our uh, point to point, and we're going to put that on there, and we aligned that one. And we're going to grab it again, and we're going to move it up, copy it, and then we're going to say point to point, and go right there. And now we could actually start grabbing all of them, or two more of them, I should say. And we're going to move them up. And we do point to point. Now this is the beginner way of doing this. And it's, it's, I use this quite a bit doing it like this, but there's a smarter way to do this. You could grab the first one 
go under upper upper left hand corner go under create and tell it that you want to create a pattern a rectangular pattern and then you can basically say how you know what axis that you want to offset them on and it'll actually create the stack for you using this this pattern functionality play around with it see if you like to use it um, it's, it's easier in some regards uh, but right now we're just going to keep it simple and, and just move them manually and so th this is the, the basic shape that you were looking for right yeah yeah, yeah. so now uh, this I was thinking that the sides, sides were going to be more rounded, rounded but yeah. yeah okay well we can go back to our sketch and make it more rounded if you want so if we if we go back into our sketch I wanted them to look like yeah. half circles okay so is that hard to do? No, we can go back in here and just say, "Hey, we want to make it two radius instead of." Or let's well, 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 how it's six six wide, so maybe like two and a half. Yeah, so that's two and a half right there. You like that better? Uh, let's let's see what three looks like. So we have to be careful exactly. that we don't overlap. The, the right, let's go two two point nine. Let's see if we can do three. So we, we got a warning error. It said, said it failed to solve because I think we got too close. So if we go 2.99. Yeah, yeah, that's what I wanted to look like. Yeah. All right, there we go. If you zoom in wow. here, because we went 2.99, we have a little bit of a flat space. And that's that's okay. You won't really see it when you mill. But if you're going to it off. off. You could also do this with a circle instead of rounding the edges off. But let's... Let's just keep going with this one for now. Okay, so let's consider all of these bodies to be our preview. This is just how they fit together. How, you know, so we're going to go over here to our folder. We're going to say new group and then name it whatever you want. I'm just going to name it preview. We're going to grab all of these bodies and we're going to throw it in the preview folder. And now no. we want to create a new group called Wait. mill. Wait, Wait, you, you only grabbed grab like half of them. These, all of these other ones are our old box. Oh, oh okay. I'm just, I just left them there. I can, I can delete them if it makes it easier. Um, okay, so here's all our bodies that's part of our preview. We want to lay this out now so we can mill it. Yeah. yeah. So let's grab them all at the same time and make a copy. And you can see we have another set of those over there. And I'm going to drop these down into this folder just to make it easier to kind of see what we're doing and not get confused. So let's hide our preview. And now we want to start laying these out for milling. So I'm going to grab that, put that over there. One thing to be mindful of is our plywood is 0.7 inches thick we need to make sure that all of these line up back on the same plane the bottom plane in order to mill them properly so because we in our preview mode we i set these up to where they're stacked on top of each other if we start moving these out they're all going to be on a different plane and that's whoops sorry i keep hitting the wrong button so that is going to be bad for milling. See the shadow underneath it? Mm -hmm. So let's start aligning these to the bottom. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab a point at the bottom of this object and align it to the bottom of that object. And now I know that these are on the same plane. Another thing you can do is just re-extrude these two from the original sketch and that, that'll do the same thing for you. But I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it this way for some crazy reason. Okay. So there's one, two, let's get these. Now I'm, I'm also not a pro at this. You so have to make them flat on the bottom? You have to make them all on the same plane for milling because milling's gonna take- how, do you, how did you do that? How did you make them? Is it just like your Z height zero? No. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm going into the move copy and I'm setting point to point again. Grabbing point to point, grabbing this point, and aligning it to that point over there so that it becomes oh, okay. part of that. 
So one thing I haven't found in Fusion is it, the local coordinates of this object. So there's probably a better way of doing this, but I like normally in 3D Studio Max, it'll tell you where that object is in the XYZ position, and I'll just zero out the Z axis and bring it all the way down. But I can't. I haven't found that in Fusion yet. I, I'm not sure if that exists or not. Because these are all relative positions. These aren't absolute. So like, I'll show you. If you grab this object, like all these are set to zero because we haven't moved it yet. It's, it's not giving you the actual coordinates it is in world space. Mm -hmm. So when you move it, it'll give you the relative position of where it was to begin with. I probably didn't explain that the right way. So I'm, I'm putting all of these on the same axis, or trying to at least. So let me ask you this, right? I know these are pretty small pieces as it is, right? But like me doing that plywood mallet that I did, right? One of the things that I learned was lining this stuff up was challenging, right? In, in is there a better way to line them up? Or am I just, you know, open, like just, just glue them together? Do I want to put dados on every one of those? Oh, you mean after the pieces have been milled, how do you line them up to glue them together? Yeah. So you could. So let's say each one of these round oval shapes had a top dado and a bottom dado that, and made them fit together. That would be ideal. But now you're introducing milling um, two-sided pieces. And because your, your CNC machine is only going to be able to mill the top. It's not going to be able to put a dado on the bottom. So what you're going to have to do is mill the top and then flip the whole piece, get it into the proper orientation so it all lines up, then mill the dado on the bottom. Which, okay, which is, it's, it's hard. It's, 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 just hard. Hard. Yeah, it, it, it's kind of challenging. <laughs> um, but it's not, it's not impossible. It's definitely doable. Okay. Um, another thing that you could do is if you, these sides were thicker, you could actually add little holes, either for dowels or screw holes or something like that, or, or a metal rod or something. And that would allow you to put them all on the same axis using those holes with a reference point or, or like a wire going through all of them. So they squeeze I'm thinking I'm probably brad nail them together. Yeah. Glue <laughs> brad nail. All right, so now we have all the pieces for the, the for the glue holder. And we want to make sure they're all in the same plane. So looking at the left view or the front view, and we're not seeing any weird shadows, so we know that they're all on the same level. So now, if in the upper left-hand corner, you can see we're in design mode. And this is where you're going to spend most of your time. But we need to switch modes now into manufacture in order to set up the tool paths and do and get the things ready for milling. So ignore a lot of this stuff in here until you until you learn more about fusion. So generative design and render. I mean, render can be handy. It's just rendering it out for you. But all these other things, um, I'm I'm basically going from design to manufacture pretty often, and the other ones I don't use that much yet. So let's jump to manufacture. Now, again, our toolbar, we're in a different mode. So our toolbar oh, I found with just two modes. <laughs> well, keep in mind, this is a professional tool for, for people in a lot of different, um, for a lot of different use cases. You can use this for laser engraving, 3D printing, uh, you know, CNC's with four axes versus three. We're just using a, a small portion of it to do what we needed to do for plywood. Okay, so now, it doesn't look hardly any different, but now we're in manufacture. And we cannot do a lot of the, the same things that we did in design mode in manufacture mode. In manufacture mode is mostly building your tool paths and then what, and doing simulations to make sure that you, you set things up properly. So let's, we need to start milling these things. So let's go over to setups and we're gonna create a new setup 
right click on that say new setup and immediately it tries to do a setup with everything in your scene which is not what we want because we have those extra models over here that we that were left over from from our initial test and we're not using those so let's start with the beginning of the setup panel here so the machine you have to set up your machine like what type of machine do you have um, normally you're going to want to use the generic three axis for a three axis cnc machine if you again if you had a 3d printer that's this is where you'd be setting up 3d printing if you had um you know a, a lay a cnc lathe you would have to set that up in here so so for my x carve i know i had to add the post processor in the cloud thing yeah so is that where i'm looking for my machine no that'll be on when you export the g-code and, and we'll okay. get to that in a minute I, this should work in but keep in mind I, yours I is under recent how would i find that if it wasn't under recent the autodesk generic three axis yeah because yours is un under recent on the left yeah so like mine won't have recent so under the fusion 360 uh -oh. library it'll just show uh -oh, up okay you can see all the different crazy machines and wow yeah so the generic tree axis okay yeah. Usually yeah. set up first. So select that. And then under setup, you definitely want to do milling. You're not going to do turning or cutting or, or 3D printing. I usually leave model orientation alone. And I leave stock box point alone. And then, um, but I, but, so this origin stock box point, I, I leave alone, but you have to set your stock box point. <laughs> which I'll get to in a second. Uh, jumping down to model, I'm gonna select model. I'm gonna select all the models that we're dealing with now. So if you had a crazy design with tons and tons of different models, this is where you would just say, hey, in this setup, I only wanna deal with these six objects. And, and yeah. you can see where the yellow box kind of conformed to that. That's pretty <laughs> handy. Now for stock box point, I don't know how your CNC machine works, but f with mine, I'm always referencing off the bottom left-hand corner of my piece, my work. Piece. That's where I am. Some machines I know will do the center. Other ones will do different edges or corners. <laughs> so you just set that stock box point. Now, 90% of the mistakes that I make when milling stuff is because I forgot to set the stock box point. I'll go out to the CNC machine. I'll hit go. All of a sudden, the router will shoot off into a crazy part of the spoil board and start milling or and do all kinds of crazy stuff. It's because I didn't set the stock box point properly. Yeah. I, I can't stress that enough. As soon as you have a problem, check to make sure that is where it needs to be. So basically that's the start point for the CNC. Yeah. Okay. And, okay. and then the now, now, now I noticed that you're, it, 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 it looks like it's lining up close with the edge of those pieces, but it's not touching. Correct. So like, how do I tell it what size piece of wood I'm starting off with? So the next tab over here with the yellow box, it's called stock. So let's jump to this tab. And right now it's set to relative size, meaning in, in you get a lot of really good tool tips when you highlight over these things. But right now it's looking at the edge of all these pieces and it's it giving you an ops, offset of 0.3 outside of that, that, um, the length and the width. So you could set this to one inch if you wanted more of an offset on the edge. Or you could set it to zero if you don't want any sort of offset. I, I normally use a, a pneumatic nailer with plastic nails to secure my piece to the spoil board. So 0.3 or 0.5 is enough space around the corners to where um, I have enough room to either clamp it or nail it or screw it or, or do it whatever I want to there. Um, and then it'll also give you the rel the width and the stock depth um, of the yellow box that's currently encompassing all of your pieces. So let's say you had an existing piece of wood that you wanted to mill this out of. Instead of relative size, you would have to say fixed size. And you could say, oh, well, hey, my, my piece of wood is 30 inches by 15 inches. And you're like, oh, wow, well, those pieces don't fit 
on that piece of wood. So I, I'm going to need to find a different way to orient all of these into that area, or I'm going to have to find another piece of wood, <laughs> right? Yeah. So let's, and you, you can go larger or, or whatever you need to do. And then, so, so in this, can I move those around right now, or am I going to have to go back to sketch? You would have to go back to design in order to move those around. Okay. Let's not do that because um, I got about twenty minutes left. Okay, so let's let's keep it at relative size box. Let's say you're using plywood and you have the ability to just grab these dimensions and cut out that size that you're going to mill from, put it on your CNC machine, and, and go for it. Basically, it's got to be at least that big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could be bigger, but at, at least that big. And, and I usually fudge it, so this would be 26 by 21, and I'll have some stuff left over. Uh, in here, this is where you can uh, change. In this tab, the post-process tab, you can name what the post-process is. You can just leave this alone if you want. I don't ever mess around with any of these other settings. I don't think you would need to. But again, I don't know what those settings are for. <laughs> okay. So now we have a setup. Now we want to add a um, a new operation to this setup. So you can see there's 2D operations or 2D work. Um, what do you call it? The work paths, tool paths, and 3D tool paths. Anything that's in kind of 2D, meaning um, a very simple operation where it's top down and you're just doing the perimeter around something or you're making a, a hole in something, you want to use 2D. So use 2D as much as you, as you possibly can until you start getting into more sloping um, faces or more sculptural type faces. So, so like when you made your face, you used 3D. Right. But uh, most everything else that I've done in plywood, even with creating the dados here, I'll, I'll use 2D. So let's let's so do like when you did your dust switcher, switcher is, that is that 2D? It was 2D because I, I'm not I didn't carve those out of a piece of wood. I carved the the silhouettes or the the slices of them all in 2D and then glued them all together. Which is kind of what we're doing here, right? We're we're making these silhouettes or slices and we're gonna stack them on top of each other. So let's do 2D contour. Now, I, we use 2D contour for pretty much everything. So added 2D contour to our setup stack. And over in our panel here, it's the first thing it wants to know is what is your tool? And, and that is your, your tool is your router bit. So uh, I kept getting uh -oh. lost. So I made this really quick cheat sheet of all of the router tool bits that I have and the Amana tool bits. This is like a PDF. What's that? Oh, wow. Okay. And because all of these have reference numbers in them and, and I purchased them all from a Mana tool. And if you go to the Amana tool website, you can download a settings file that goes into Fusion 360 and will, it will basically set up all of your tools accurately for that particular bit. I highly recommend to do that. Even if you have a bit that's similar to a mana tool bit, like I don't have this exact V groove bit, but I know mine's close. Um, I use this code to find that bit because it'll set it up all for me. So let's say we want to use this compression bit. So the number is 46170. So if I click on the tool here and I go to all and I start typing in 46170. It will show up in this list. And I can say, oh, well, there's the bit. It's 46170-K. It's a, a Spectra, a Mana Tool bit. It gets, has all of the information. It's all perfect. All I have to do is select that. I don't have to create my own bits. I don't have to you know, measure bits and do everything like that. That's all, that's, the entire process is just, I'm using this bit, here's the code, I'm all set up. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, feeds and speeds are important if you're doing more elaborate things and, and more 
um, different types of materials. I don't mess around with these hardly ever. So that's basically the recommended speeds and feeds for that bit. For that bit. Um, I think there's other presets. Yeah, you can, you can set these up however you want to. Uh, I just leave that alone. I'm not, I haven't got to the point where I understand how, how all that works. I'm, I'm just good to go. Jump over to the next tab, which is geometry. And the first thing it wants to know is where are your contours? So I'm going to click that and I'm going to start selecting all of the contours of all of the, of the shapes and pieces that I want the CNC machine to mill. So you're, so you're selecting, selecting the insides and the outsides? outsides? Yeah, because we needed to cut inside and outside, right? These are hollow. Yeah. And now I have tabs turned on. And the tab, and you don't have to use tabs. Uh, I've been using tabs a lot lately, so I set this up as the, the um, default. And But you can mess around with the tab distance. And now, the tabs is what the bit will avoid when it's cutting. So it'll, yep, leave, yep. it'll leave that material behind. So let's That's a lot of tabs. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna change that from two inches, every two inches to every four inches. And that looks okay. The there we could probably use some more tabs on the inside. You can also change this from tab positioning to by distance to at points. If you click at points, you can actually just pick where you want tabs to be and you're, you're, you're manually placing down all of your own tabs but for simplicity's sake let's just leave it at by distance cool so now we're basically done with that i don't know what stock contours does uh and the rest of these things i basically leave alone going to heights it will show automatically what the top part of your pieces are and then all the clearances for how much your CNC machine should go up and move over when it needs to start doing different operations. So it doesn't mm -hmm. go through the piece and, and wreck the piece. Uh, normally I'll leave most of these alone depending on what I'm doing, but you should double check your bottom height. This is where it's going to go down through your piece and go into the spoil board. So 0.05 I found is a good value, 0.03 if your board is very, very flat, you know it's like trimmed out. But mess around with these settings for what you're doing on your CNC machine. You might have to go higher or lower. Um, and there's different options too. You can do the bottom, model bottom. You can do, I, I'm, I usually leave it on selected contours and, and just go down a little bit. This will make sure that your piece is completely um, milled out of the, the uh, plywood. Uh, next tab is passes. Wait, so so, so what did it say the safety height was? So the the safety height. The, the height the bit goes between when it moves right. from one thing to another. I think that's your retract height or your clearance height. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Got it. I think it's clearance height. Okay. Yeah, you might have to set these uh, at a different. For, for what you're doing. But normally the defaults are pretty good here. So to jump over to the passes, uh, I normally leave most of this alone, except for multiple depths. Depending on what, you're, what bit you're using, you might have to do multiple depths. So the thinner or smaller the bit is, the more chance um, when you try to re remove a lot of material, you're either gonna burn it or you're gonna break your bit. So I, for a, a compression bit, I normally do probably about, uh, my compression bit is about a quarter of an inch until it starts changing from up to down or from down to up. So I'll do like 0.26 in, in uh, roughing passes or maximum roughing passes. Essentially, this, what this is saying is instead of tracing the outline once, we're going to trace it four or five times and we're going to go down a little bit every time we trace it. So we're only mm -hmm. going to take off a little bit of material or 0.26 material. So here I'm going to say OK. Now it shows us in these blue lines the path that the, the bit is going to take. And when we set up that maximum uh, range, the 0.26, that's the distance between these blue lines. 
So let's say we go back in here and we say, oh, well, that doesn't look good. Let's set it to 0.4. We're going to have less lines, but that means the, the bit is going to be chewing away more material, which, yeah. which could cause problems. Oh, so that makes sense. So, like, I had this one thing where it just automatically was set, and it's like when I, when I was going, it was like that last huge pass taking off just a tiny bit. I'm like, why couldn't I have just made that more? And just remove that last pass. So here's let's let's set this at 0.05, and you can see all of the lines. It's not taking off enough material. This is going to take forever. It's just going to it's yeah. going in circles forever. But I mean, if you're doing a maybe if you're doing aluminum, maybe that's what you need to do. Uh, for plywood, you can definitely get away with with higher numbers here. So let's do 0.26. And then you can also see where the path is jumping over the, the, uh, yeah, tabs. the tabs. All right. Um, now, that's it. We got it. Well, not, not necessarily. We haven't uh, milled out this dato here yet. But let's go. I know you got a bail, so let's go through the uh, process. I got, I got like um, 10 more minutes, 9 more minutes. Okay. So let's do a quick setup. Let's, let's go back to our setup folder. Let's add a, a uh, let's try pocket, 2D pocket. So the first thing you wanna do is make sure you get the right tool. So this compression bit is probably not the best bit to use, but let's just use it. And let's- What would you, what would you use? A down, a down spiral bit. Okay. Cause that'll make your top edge really clean. So now, uh, we set our tool, we want to jump into geometry, we want to click on the pocket that we're going to mill out, which is that face right there. Uh, oh, okay, I get it. Uh, tangent's probably okay. I think the rest of this you can leave alone. The height is fine, although I would change the bottom height to zero so you're not plunging deeper than you want to because you're you're essentially mm. uh, creating the dado. Multiple uh, depths, you could turn that on and probably 0.2 is good because you probably just want to take two passes. It's only 0.35 uh, depth. Uh, and then for anything dado related or slot related or anything that's going to be fitting, double check stock to leave. The defaults for this, maybe I think it's like 0.2 or 0.1. I didn't know this, and all of the dados that I was always creating were, were completely wrong. They were either too loose or too tight, and it was because of this stock to leave was set, and I didn't know it. So all my measurements were off. So I would set these as zero, turn this off, and ignore that unless you really need to use it personally. So then hit OK. In this particular path, it's showing you uh, how the bit is entering and then all of the, it's it's a lot of laps. Yeah, because there's a lot of, um, what do you call it, uh, overlapping. So if you want to change that, you can go into the linking. Uh, was it linking? Cutting radius, step down, step over. Okay, go into passes and look under maximum step over and change that to like 0.15 or 0.2, depending on the width of your bit. See, the, bit the bit is a quarter inch, right? Yeah. So like, you know, that's 0.25, so if you went half of that, you know. If, if you have a flat end bit, then that'll probably work. But sometimes if your bit is a little bit tapered or whatever, if it's 0.25, then it's it's it might not have enough overlap to get rid of those little ridges. So you probably just have to test it for whatever bit you're using. But um, this is 0.22, I think. And you can see that it, it'll, it's only gonna have four passes all the way around and then two depths. Or if, you, or if you're using a heavy duty bit, you could probably do this in one pass. And what's cool about this setup stack is you don't have to keep these in these order. You can grab this over here and say, oh, I want to do the dado first. And I just move the pocket above the contour. 
So now we're doing pocket, which is, it's always better to do those first because there's more material that'll keep it, keep things from moving around. And then we're going to contour out and that'll be the piece. And so then all you got to do now is export the G code? Yes. Uh, or you can go up to this button. See this G1, G2? That's exporting your G code. Right next to it is uh -huh. simulate. You can grab simulate and you can actually see what it's going to do and in what order it's going to do it in. Oh, wow. And then you can look at your piece and say, oh, well, there's the tabs. Here's where the router bit's coming in and out. Um, here's the dado. And you can just double check. And if you have parts that are uh, like you're trying to do something weird and your bit's not long enough, you'll start to get red bars down in this timeline here. And that means you have issues that you probably need to figure out how to, how to fix. But so the, our simulation looks great. Let's close out of that. And you want to go up to your G code and basically click on this. And this is where you would set your, uh, what was it? What was the name of your machine? X-Carve. X-Carve. Uh, I don't remember. Oh, wait. So under here, under mock, we want to do X-Carve. So this line right here, change that to X-Carve, and it'll spit out an NC file for you. You can give it a name, and then when you hit post, it will save the file out to whatever that folder is, and you can load that up into X-Carve and do your milling. Hmm. It is so cool. Sorry if I went too fast in some of this stuff. I, we can revisit it offline. You went, you went the right speed, man. I couldn't handle any slower or quicker. Uh, this, this is great, man. This is really exciting. I mean, it's really, you know, so like I've gotten the hang of um, uh, the designing in Affinity Designer, which is like um, Adobe Illustrator, you know? And this is just like that, but you're shooting things out and then you're just telling the tour where to go. Like this all makes sense to me. You know, I just need to start trying to design some stuff. So it's really powerful and, I, and I've learned to like it a lot, but it will do exactly what you tell it to do, including your mistakes. So if, if you make a mistake, it's going to screw up and ruin everything. And it's because you, that's what you told it to do. It's not smart enough to know, like, oh, hey, you know, this over here is not right. Um, yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude, this is awesome. Thank you so much, man. No problem. Thanks, Luke. Dude, I, I appreciate this. Let's, I, look, so um, uh, what I, what I want to do is I'm going to um, try to design something. And then maybe you could come back and we could take a look at it and um, – and we, you can, we can see, like, how, like, like, if I'm doing it right. Yeah. Like, I think I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to um, take my one of my. I'm going to try to take one of my designs and port it in here, and I don't know. Let me think about it. Um, okay. I'm happy to help. My mind's racing. That's the problem. I've got too many ideas. <laughs> I'm I'm totally happy to help. Whatever you need. Thanks, thanks, Pete. Man, you're the best, dude. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thanks, Luke. Thanks for. All right, thanks, man. Thanks for listening. All right, bye. All right, man. See you later.